For this next presentation, I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the lumbar spine. I've got a full spinal model here, which I can use. Um, I've got a smaller model, and I've got one here, which is mainly pelvis, but the lower lumbar vertebra, you can see, is sitting on here. So I know this has only got four vertebra, but the lumbar spine has five. Okay, so five lumbar vertebra, L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. And in comparison, there are many differences between, say, the lumbar and the cervical, and that goes through the size of the vertebral bodies, yeah, the size of the spinous process, yeah, etc., etc. But if we look here initially, so this will be, let's say this is L1. So this is L1 vertebral body, two, three, four, and actually L5 will sit here. In between, you can see the blue structure. So this will be the intervertebral disc. And we've got in the whole vertebral column, 23 intervertebral discs. The outer covering is known as the annulus fibrosis. And then the center fluid is known as the nucleus pulposus. The vertebral body comes around. So let's say I'm a vertebral body and my arms come out. They stick out almost like a stump. So this is called the pedicle where they stick out. So you've got the pedicles, yep, yeah, either side. And then the pedicles form like the neural um, canal here, where the spinal cord would come down. But in the lumbar spine, where the spinal cord ends around roughly L1, it's called the corda equina, which is like the tail of the horse. So it comes down through that sort of like um, spinal canal, the vertebral canal, uh, where this neural arch is formed by the pedicle. And then it continues into what they call the lamina. And then the lamina, the continuation, there's a finger, and they call that the spinous process. So on this area in here, so this area there would be like the pedicle, pedicle here, just here, there. And then it comes around onto the lamina. So this is the lamina. So they do something called a laminectomy to remove part of a disc, which is like a, uh, like a discectomy, where they go through. And then these hatchet-shaped, are known as the spinous processes in here. Between each vertebra, you can see the nerve root. So that's L1. The nerve root is below. So this will be L1 nerve root, just here. And this will be L2, L3, L4, and so on. Like L2, 3, 4, for instance, will be part of the, the femoral nerve. If it's L4, 5, S1, 2, 3, it's part of the sciatic nerve. Yeah, etc. When we are looking at the space, the space in between is called the intervertebral forearm and foramen in here, just in there. So that's where the nerve root will come out. And obviously, if you have a disc prolapse within the canal, okay, so if it normally goes posterior lateral, it can affect the exiting nerve root or even the actual traversing nerve root, the one going down. And that space naturally is compromised when the discs go through degenerative changes. We have many facet joints in the whole vertebral column. These little facets here, medically called the zygopophyseal joint or pophyseal, but we simply call them the facet. And the facet joints in the lumbar are more vertically orientated. And roughly speaking, you've got about one to two degrees of rotation per segment. So within the lumbar, it's only about five to 10 degrees. So when you are rotating, obviously the legs, the feet, the pronate, supinate, um, the hips will internally, externally rotate, the thoracic spine will rotate, but not much movement comes from the lumbar. The facet joints allow motion in certain planes, i.e. flexion, extension, but they limit rotation. The reason why you've got the facets is because they, are, they stabilize, they limit motion, but allow motion. If you didn't have the facets, then more than likely the spine would become degenerative very soon. As in, by the time you're 30s, you'd have a condition called spondylosis, rather than getting like osteoarthritis when you are say 60 or 70. So um, the facets almost like prevent you from getting too many degenerative changes. And when they start to become irritated, you get little bony spurs called the facet joints forming around there. And that is a introduction to the anatomy of the lumbar spine. And thank you for watching.